Welcome to another episode of our Cornerstone Lesson Review. In this episode, we are looking at Lesson 2 entitled Storm Warning. Our key text says, Perhaps when the people of Judah hear about every disaster I plan to inflict on them, they will each turn from their wicked ways. Then I will forgive their wickedness and their sin. Jeremiah 36 verse 3 Let us pray. Loving Father, we ask that you will help us to open our hearts to your word so that we will not have to suffer as the people were about to suffer in this key text. Bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So our flashlight says, when men's hearts are softened and subdued by the constraining influence of the Holy Spirit, they will give heed to counsel. But when they turn from abomination until their hearts become hardened, the Lord permits them to be led by other influences. Refusing the truth, they accept falsehood, which becomes a snare to their own destruction. All right, so let's go to the daily section. Sabbath section, we have this scripture passage, uh, Jeremiah 36 verses 21 to 23. It says we should read that. Let's go with that. So it says, The king sent Jehudai to get the scroll, and Jehudai brought it from the room of Elishama, the secretary, and read it to the king and all the officials standing beside him. It was the ninth month, and the king was sitting in the winter apartment with a fire burning in the fire pot in front of him. When Jehudai had read three or four columns from the school, the king cut them off with a scribe's knife and threw them into the fire pot until the entire scroll was burnt in the fire. Rather interesting. Burning the word of God. Hmm. Remember the last time a teacher or parent or someone else told you what you were doing was wrong? How did you feel? Look over your answers to the what do you think section. Let's go to that what do you think section here. It says, when someone gives me a warning or tells me bad things are going to happen if I don't change my behavior, I thank them for the warning and make changes right away, ignore them, later think about it and make changes. <laughs> you know what we could add to this as well? We curse them out belittle them and try in some way to say that the person is fighting against us we could add that there as well but what should we do right uh, we should do what thank the person for the warning and make the changes as quickly as we can we shouldn't ignore them because in so doing we will we would become scoffers right Again, it's important to think about these things and make the changes, but it is better to do so sooner rather than later. Let's go back. Let's see here. People respond to correction in very different ways. Sometimes it depends on how we were, we're feeling. Sometimes it depends on who is doing the correcting. True, somebody that you don't like, you brush them off. It is much easier to take correction and warnings from someone we respect and have a good relationship with. The king of Judah was presented with a warning from God. How did he choose to respond? Not in a good way. Burning the scroll. Mm -mm. Sunday's section says that we need to read Ezekiel 33 verse 11. So let's look at that. Say to them, as surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. Why will you die? 
people of Israel. So some people believe that God is just sitting up there waiting to, you know, cast out judgment and fire and brimstone and lightning on, you know, on us. But he would rather that we turn from our wicked ways and live. It says, read the into the story section and read and think about the out of the story questions. The king of Judah had a hard time accepting correction and rebuke. He didn't want to hear Jeremiah's warning. Often, we don't like hear words of warning. We may respond by attacking the person who is warning us. Some people choose to ignore God's word, but even if the warnings are ignored, the message is still there. There is a storm on the horizon and we need to be prepared. All right, so story. Into the story. In the fourth year of Jediah Kim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, the word came to Jeremiah the Lord. Uh, Take a scroll and write on it all the words I have spoken to you concerning Israel, Judah, and all the nations from the time I began speaking to you in the reign of Josiah till now. Uh, perhaps when the people of Judah hear about the disaster I plan to inflict on them, they will each, notice each, turn from their wicked ways. Then I will forgive their wickedness and their sin. So Jeremiah called Baruch, uh, son of Neriah, and while Jeremiah dictated all the words the Lord spoke to him, Baruch wrote, wrote them on a scroll. Then Jeremiah told Baruch, uh, I am restricted. I am not allowed to go to the Lord's temple. So you should go to the house of the Lord on the day of fasting and read it to the people. Mm, let's see. From the scroll, yes, the words of the Lord that you wrote as I dictated. Read them to the people of Judah who come in from their towns and perhaps they will bring their petitions before the Lord and will each turn from their wicked ways for the anger and wrath pronounced against this people is by the Lord are great. So Barak, son of Neriah, did everything Jeremiah the prophet told him to do at the Lord's temple. He read the words of the Lord from the scroll. The king sent um, Jehudai uh, to get the scroll. Jehudai brought it from the room of El Shama, the secretary, and read it to the king and all the officials standing beside him. It was the ninth month and the king was sitting in the winter apartment with a fire in the fire pot um, in front of him. Whenever um, Jehudai read three or four columns from the scroll, the king cut them with a scribe's knife and threw them into the fire pot until the entire scroll was burnt in the fire. The king and all his attendants who had heard all these words showed no fear, nor did they tear their clothes, even though El Nathan, Deliah, and Jeremiah, mm -hmm. Jeremiah urged the king not to burn the scroll. He did not listen to them. Instead, the king commanded Jerahim, Jeremel, Jeremiel, a son of the king, Seraiah, son of Arizel, son of Azarel, and Shelemiah, son of Abdil, to arrest Barak, the scribe, and Jeremiah the prophet, but the Lord ha had hidden them. So let's go to the questions now. Here we go. At this point in the story, God still prepared to hold back the punishment if the people of Judah repented. Uh, was he still able to? Mm, can't tell. Mm. Yes, he was. Because in it, he said that, let's go back to this. He was. He said here, the Lord, um... Perhaps they will bring their petitions before the Lord and they will each turn 
Um, for the anger. Da, 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 da. Mm. I think. I think. I think so. I think so. Based on this, it says I will forgive. So if they turn, on condition that they turn away, and you know he will forgive. All right. So I think. Yeah. He was prepared. What was the purpose of Jeremiah getting um, Barak to read um, the scroll to the people? Why didn't Jeremiah read it to the people himself? Uh, there is a line that says he was not able to go. It sounds to me like he had been banned. What was the response of the king and his counselors uh, to Barak's scroll? What do you think? Uh, the king wanted to indicate by doing this that he had no regard, no regard for what was being said. What do you think is the best way to warn people about the consequences of their actions? What kinds of warnings do you tend to listen to? Okay, so some people are very responsive to negatives and warnings come across as negatives. If you don't do this, you're going to burn up, you're going to dead. If you do this, you're going to live. People are uh, more drawn to the negative what is going to what the bad thing that is going to happen than to the positive which is to the reward so people uh, like to hear about the bad things but the rewards hmm, they don't seem real two options are put in front of you the, the on the one hand the blessings of obedience and the other the curses of disobedience the curses motivate a lot of people uh, sometimes the blessings of obedience don't seem to motivate people as much as the blessings do. All right, so going back. All right. So that takes care of uh, Sunday. Monday, read Jeremiah 30, uh, 3 verse 6, Exodus 19 verse 5, and Luke 13 verse 9. Let's see those. Jeremiah 13. Okay, so we know we know this one from the key text already. Jeremiah 19. No, that's not Jeremiah. No, it's Exodus 19, verse 15. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all the nations you will be my treasured possession, although the whole earth is mine. So blessings of obedience there luke 13 19 13 9 if it bears fruit next year fine if not cut it down let's go back and see if we have the right section here luke um luke 13 9 this is with the tree so he gave it one more chance he gave it another year uh okay so it says read this uh week's key text we did that mark the statements below true or false based on what you read uh, god was planning to punish the people of judah for their sins true god had his mind made up and nothing was going to change it false if they repented then they would have been given some form of mercy all right many of the predictions and warnings that the prophets brought to god's people were conditional yeah if they continued in their wicked um, ways, destruction would come. But if they were willing to change, the outcome would be different, right? So if you do this, then this will happen. Most of the warnings we face are conditional too. Um, they are what computer programmers call if-then statements. If you do this, then this will happen. If you watch the TV instead of studying, then you'll fail your exams. But if you change your ways um, and study, then you'll pass. Think of other if-then statements that are related to your everyday life. Oh, here's another one. If we waste today, we'll never make it up for each day brings its duties as it comes. That's a little gem. So it's telling you what is going to happen if you waste today um so so that's one um if then let me see another gem 
uh, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day, teach him how to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. If you constantly give the person the answers, no, they'll never learn for themselves. Okay? Um, if then, another if then situation. If you prepare to fail, then prepare. If you fail to prepare, then prepare to fail. All right. Those are the things that come to my mind quickly. Even the final destruction of sin at the end of time is something that we can avoid. If we turn away from our sin and put our trust in Jesus, then we will enjoy eternity with him, in heaven with him. So that takes care of Monday. Let's go to Tuesday's section, which says that we need to read Matthew 4, verse 17. Let's see. It says, from the time on, from that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. All right. So it says the flashlight uh, suggestion for this week suggests that more often we ignore God's warning and refuse to repent and it the harder it will be for us to change. So if we continue to refuse and don't listen and scoff and all of that, over time we get used to being in a position of rebellion and resistance and it becomes harder to convince us. Um, get in the habit of listening to God. Read your Bible, pray and pay attention to the advice of uh, Christian friends, teachers, parents and leaders. If you get used to responding to God's guidance, then it will be easier to follow. So, tying back to the point, we can get accustomed to something, right? So, what we want to do is get accustomed to doing the right thing. Let's go to Wednesday. It says, read through the punchline texts, then use a Bible concordance to look up some of the... Um, some more verses about repentance in your own words complete the statements below so let's go to the punch lines so here punch lines let's go over a little bit and i am not able to make to see all of this clearly but let's do the best that we can as surely as i live declares the lord i take no pleasure in the death of the wicked right but rather that they turn from their ways and live okay turn turn from your evil ways why should you die people of israel ezekiel 33 verse 11. if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then i will hear from heaven and i will forgive their sins and heal their land second chronicles 7 verse 14 can you imagine that some of the destruction some of the uh, natural disasters some of the challenges that we have in the environment could be as a result here of not hearing not seeking god's face and not turning from our wicked ways from that time on jesus began to preach Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Matthew 7 verse, Matthew 4 verse 17 rather. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to what perish, but everyone to come to uh, repentance. Second Peter 3 verse 9. All right. So a few good texts there. God has to punish sin because he has to read the universe of it, right? Repentance means uh, giving up on that sinful path and taking a new path in Jesus. If we repent, then God will give us the strength we need to take the next step, okay? All right, uh, Thursday section says we need to read Proverbs 12, verse 1, 13, verse 8, 15, verse 5, 31, and 32. All right, so let's see here Proverbs 
12 verse 1 whosoever loves discipline loves knowledge but whosoever hates correction is stupid so if somebody is saying hey you need to change this study technique that you have uh, you can't study with the phone beside you you have to put it away there's no such thing as multitasking right your your brain just switching between one thing and another really really fast and it does not help in the long run let's do time blocking uh let's actually uh you know be free of distractions and st all of those negotiations that your parents go through to get, actually get you to study uh sometimes we brush those aside and say them old people are them don't understand my brain used to this technology and i can do these things i can lie down on the bed crossway with the laptop and um you know my eyeball on the screen and i'm good i won't go blind you know you people are old that's why your eyes are not working anymore stuff like that are we willing to listen do we love discipline getting out of bed early getting out of bed early going to do our duties before we check social media uh, all of those things do we love discipline anyone who loves the discipline loves knowledge and whosoever hates correction is stupid so if you don't want people to correct you you're being stupid right not not wise let's go proverbs 13 18 whosoever disregards discipline comes to poverty and shame but whosoever heeds correction is honored that one is straight people who do not like discipline do not tend to do well because success requires effort and discipline uh, proverbs 15 verses uh, 31 to 32 it says Whosoever heeds life-giving correction will be home among the wise, at home among the wise. And those who disregard discipline despise themselves, but no one who heeds correction, but the one who heeds correction gains understanding. This is such a powerful one. If it is that you, you don't like discipline, then you hate yourself, right? And if you like correction or you 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 know you, you accept it, then you are going to gain understanding. I think this is Proverbs 15, 5 now, yes. A fool spurns appearance discipline, but whosoever heeds correction shows prudence, carefulness, um, being wise. Okay. Let's go here. Mm-hmm. Below are some positive responses that you could give uh, to someone who offers a warning or a correction. You can add a few of your own. Thanks for pointing that out. I'll think about it and pray about it. That's, that's not bad. I'm sorry I'll try to do meta next time. I never thought of it that way before. Thanks. Okay. Friday says, read John 14, verse 26, and Hebrews 3, verses 7 and 8. Let's go with John 14 first. And that one says, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said, everything I have said to you. That's a wonderful promise. Uh, Hebrews 3 verse 78 says, So as the Holy Spirit says today, if you hear the voice, hear his voice rather, do not harden your heart. So as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the wilderness. So let's read that again. So as the Holy Spirit says today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart heart as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the wilderness can you think of things in your life that the holy spirit wants to convict you about what are you prepared to change in your life in response to god's call is it friends is it the, the, the movies? Is it the games? Is it social media? 
uh, is it TikTok? Is it you know what is it? What are you prepared to change? When I was a child, I speak as a child, and you get to the point where you put away childish things. What are you willing to put away? All right, so that takes care of our episode for this week. Please remember that we have our reading here from Prophets and Kings, or the book Royalty and Ruin, chapter 35. So that takes care of this episode, Storm uh, Warning. Very important to pay attention to the warnings so that we can avoid the pain and destruction that comes with not listening to a warning. Take care. We'll see you in our next episode.